Hopefully this video is review for you. We're going to go over how to make graphs. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, so if you truly do not understand how to make these graphs, please come and see me and we can work through it. First, we're just going to do a really quick example of a line graph. Off to the side, I'm going to give you a data table. It's just going to be made up. So we'll put day and I'm just going to skip a couple days for the sake of time here. We'll do 1, 4, 7, and 10. And then in the next column we'll say the height. We'll pretend we're measuring plants in centimeters. And on day 1 the plant was 1 centimeter. Here it was 3, 4.5, and 8. Again, there would normally be a lot more data points, but I'm just kind of going through this quickly since this should be a review to you. Now we have two axes. We have the x-axis which goes this way and the y-axis that goes up and down. If you are not going to remember that, I would write that in. And the way I like to remember this, the y has the long arrow pointing down, up and down that way. So x versus y. On the x-axis is where we put our independent variable. And I'm just going to put that as a little note off to the side. The here will be your dependent variable. The independent variable is what the scientist is changing in the experiment. Uh, what are they controlling, basically? You can't really control how tall the plant gets. That's dependent. That's what we are measuring. We can control how often we measure the plant, so by days. I'm going to start numbering by ones. I counted these out before and there should be 17, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Perfect. Now even though we only went up to day 10, I still want you to fill this out all the way. We need to label our x-axis. So what does this represent? It represents the day. The y-axis going up we have from 1 to 8 would be our highest number. And I can already see that there's not a lot of boxes here. So I'm just going to go by 1s. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, one more thing that we need on this graph before we start putting our data in would be what is this graph about? We need to give it a title. So this one we could say plant height per day. It should be descriptive of what your graph is actually about. Now we're going to start plotting points. We always do the x-axis first and then the y. So on day one the plant was one centimeter tall. We're making a line graph, so we're going to put a dot there and come back to it later. On day four, now again, normally we'd have more data, but I'm just skipping for the sake of time. Day four, the plant was three centimeters. So on day four, it was three. Day seven, it was four and a half. Now there's no four and a half on our scale, but halfway between four and five would be right there. And then on day 10, we go up to eight. As this is a line graph, you should connect your points, like so. You could use a ruler, but that is basically how you make a line graph. You will be doing some of that later on, especially when you conference with me. For a bar graph, similar, we still have our x-axis and our y. And I'm just going to make up some information again. Let's say we're looking at days of the week, the school week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I always use an H for Thursday so you can differentiate between T for Tuesday. You'll see some other teachers do that as well. It's just a habit that I picked up in college and have been doing it ever since. Let's say that, so this is day of week, and this is number of people. Let's say that two people like Mondays, one, four, three, and eight. We are now making a bar graph. On the x-axis we are putting what can we control? Can we control how many people like each day? No. 
we can control what days of the week we're looking for. As a bar graph, I'm just going to go every three here. So this will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. Up the side, so I actually should label day of week. Up the side, we're going to say the number of people. I'm just going to count again like before, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and start making our bar graph on Monday. There are two people that like Mondays, so fill it in. I'm not doing this in super spectacularly. You can make yours neater if you wish. Tuesday we have one person. On Wednesday we have four people. Thursday we have three. And then Friday we go up to eight. Now, what I'm really picky about with charts and graphs is spreading out your information. I want you to use up as much of the grid space as possible. If you were to, let's say, make your bars only take up here, you know, so if you put like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and left the rest of this blank, I would take off points. Spreading out your data points is going to make it easier to interpret. Same thing here. Again, I said we would technically have more information. I just didn't go that far. But if you had stopped right here um, or condensed everything down to like here, I'd take off points. So really, really use your space. If you don't understand how to make bar graphs, please make sure you see me. Lastly, pie charts. I'm not going to make you create them but you should be able to interpret them. It's usually pretty simple. This one says, how much water do we use? So when you're interpreting it, you first want to look at the title and then see what each section of the pie represents. It'll usually give you a percentage. So toilets use 26.7% of the water. Obviously, the most water use is coming from toilets. The least amount is coming from other sources. And sometimes in your graphs and things, it will explain what other technically means. Now that we're done with this, your next steps, um, watch this video, done, and you've done the quiz questions inside of it. Complete the line graph worksheet, so go to the crate and grab the worksheet that you need. And then the next page in your notes, you're going to be doing a conference with me. And what you need to do, it tells you at the bottom, come prepared, so look at it, write on it, answer it. Come prepared to talk to me about your answers. Be able to explain how you arrived at each answer. So yeah, you might be able to get it right, but you need to tell me how you got your answers. If there's a line for conferences, so if you're standing here waiting and I'm talking with somebody else, start a list on the board. Just put your name down and I'll call you up when I am ready for you. And if you have any other questions, if none of this makes sense, make sure you come see me because this is really important stuff that we'll be hitting all year long.